Aloha, I am Richard Melendez, and this is The Thought Balloon on ThinkTech Hawaii. The Thought Balloon is where I share reviews and discuss other topics related to comic books and graphic novels. And today is when I talk about one of those other related topics. And I suspect that my segment today is going to leave us all with more questions than answers, but I think that might be a good thing. There was a comic released a few weeks ago that dealt with touchy subject matter, while at the same time it messed with typical superhero tropes. It was called Strange Fruit, and it was written by Mark, Ray, Mark Wade and illustrated by J.G. Jones, both popular and well-regarded creators with impressive bodies of work behind them. Yet this comic ended up being somewhat controversial. Strange Fruit is set in Mississippi in 1927, a dark period of American history in a region then known for widespread racial inequality and violence. Enter a strange being from another world who crash lands in the middle of a farm. He's seemingly indestructible and displays great superhuman strength and is thus able to disrupt a lynching with ease. The similarities to Superman's origin are obvious and deliberate, except in Strange Fruit, this being has dark skin and features that appear to be African or African American, and now he's right in the middle of segregationist era Mississippi. Only one issue of Strange Fruit has been released to date, and there's no question that it's well written and beautifully illustrated in a style that's somewhat evocative of Norman Rockwell. But the question and the controversy isn't over whether or not this is any good. The question is whether the creative minds behind this story, two white males, should have even tackled the subject. After all, it was white males who instituted that racist environment. And what would they know of the black experience during that time? I'm not here to cast an opinion on this matter. There are strong and valid arguments in both camps. My intent in bringing this up is to point out that issues of race and identity permeate comic book culture just as much, if not more so, than other mediums of popular culture. Now, humor me for a moment. Close your eyes. When I say the words superhero, what image pops into your head? Chances are good that you're picturing someone who is A, male, and B, white. There's a fair possibility that a female character came to mind and there's an e even a chance you may have thought of the Black Panther or even Miles Morales, the younger Afro-Latino version of Spider-Man who was introduced a few years ago. But prominent characters who are women or people of color are rare. Too often they're relegated to second or third tier roles, or worse, one-dimensional caricatures. Now to be fair, some of that is changing, though it is a slow and painful process. These last few years have seen the introduction of a female Thor, a black Captain America, and a gay Green Lantern, just to name a few prominent characters who are breaking barriers, so to speak. Publishers are seeing not only the commercial value, but also the social importance of including characters with a variety of backgrounds and experiences. But each step forward reveals new questions that hadn't been considered before. Now let's go back to Strange Fruit for a moment. The subject matter is taken seriously, and for the most part dealt with in a way that's respectful and historically accurate. By way of the story being told, we are confronting our troubled history. So on one level, it can be argued that this is progress. But the other question, whether this is a story that should be told by white men, is something that many possibly hadn't considered until this was published. Now let me ask you this. Could or should the color pur purple have been written by a white male? How about do the right thing? Roots. What of the Black Panther, a character who was an African king? What about Wonder Woman or Batgirl? Who should have a stake in how these characters are portrayed? Full disclosure, my background is Puerto Rican. Growing up, the only Puerto Rican or Hispanic people I remember seeing on television were Carlos and Maria on Sesame Street or Chico from the sitcom Chico and the Man. Miles Morales, the Afro-Latino Spider-Man I mentioned earlier, I can only imagine how wonderful it would have been to see him on the page as a child. Now there's nothing against Peter Parker. I love Peter Parker. But Peter Parker doesn't look like me. His Aunt May doesn't look like my aunts. The typical New York suburb he grew up in was nothing like my typical New York suburb. I recognized that early on. And that's not just me. That's true for a significant number of readers. Having Miles Morales as a prominent character of color starring in his own series, and not only being handled well, but being well received, is an incredible achievement in comics publishing. However, the creator of this character is a white Jewish male from the Midwest. Does that matter? It should also be noted that this writer is the parent to children of color. Miles Morales came about in part because he wanted his children to have a hero they could identify with. How does that factor into the equation? Or should it? 
I may merely present this as food for thought. I don't know the answers, but I do believe it's important that we keep asking the questions. Thank you for watching the Thought Balloon on ThinkTech Hawaii. I am Richard Melendez. Until next time.